Chapter 14 of the Tale of Betsy Butterfly. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Tale of Betsy Butterfly by Arthur Scott Bailey. Chapter 14 A Deep Plot. As time passed, Betsy continued to see a great deal of Joseph Bumble, and she noticed one peculiar thing. Although he talked continually of his cousin, Buster Bumblebee, the Queen's son, no one had ever seen the two together. "'How does it happen?' she asked Joseph at last. "'That I never find you with your cousin. Aren't you friends?' "'We're certainly not enemies,' said Joseph Bumble, "'though I must admit that we're not quite so intimate as we might be. You see, Buster and I have different tastes, and now that the red clover is in blossom, he spends all his time in the clover field. But as you know, like you, I am very fond of flowers, and I'd rather be here in the meadow or the flower garden with you than in the clover patch with Buster Bumblebee. Naturally, such an answer was bound to please Betsy Butterfly and after that she bothered her head no more about the friendship between the two cousins. Certainly Joseph Bumble's explanation sounded reasonable, and she had no cause to doubt his statement. Meanwhile there were others among Betsy Butterfly's admirers who became very peevish on observing how much time Betsy and the newcomer in the neighbourhood, Joseph Bumble, were spending in each other's society, and they agreed among themselves that something ought to be done to put an end to the upstart Bumble's boasting. Betsy Butterfly thinks the fellow is a cousin of Buster Bumblebee's, said Chirpy Cricket, but I've noticed that he and Buster are never together. Let's ask Buster to come over to the meadow so that he may meet this cousin of his and then perhaps we'll learn something more about Joseph Bumble than we know now. Everyone said that that was a good plan, and Betsy's admirers chose Daddy Longlegs to call on Buster Bumblebee and invite him to a party to be given in the meadow the following day. Daddy Longlegs agreed to do the errand, in spite of the fact that that for him it was half a day's journey to the bumblebee's home from the stone wall where he lived, but he thought that by hurrying he ought to be able to get back in time to put on his best coat and go to the party, though he might arrive somewhat late. "'Don't forget to ask Betsy Butterfly to the party,' Daddy called, as he started off on his long trip. "'Don't worry, I'll attend to that myself.' Chirpy Cricket promised. And don't forget to invite Joseph Bumble, Daddy cautioned him. Oh, we don't need to ask him, said Chirpy Cricket. He'll come without being invited, unless I'm greatly mistaken. Luckily for Daddy Longlegs, there was not a breath of wind either that day or the following one, so he made excellent time to the Bumblebee home where he found Buster Bumblebee and gave him his invitation. Then Daddy turned around and started back towards his stone wall. Buster Bumblebee had promised to come to the party, and Daddy wanted to be present when the two cousins, Buster Bumblebee and Joseph Bumble, met with Betsy Butterfly right there to watch them. End of Chapter 14